Hello, and welcome back. We're going to be doing a reading. I'm just going to give a little intro and talk a little bit about some of the things that I've been posting recently. Before I get into it, um, but I typically put a timestamp in the description box where you can skip to the beginning of the card polls if you don't want to listen to me talk first. So I posted an excerpt of my film memoir is what I called it. I made that in 2019 and all of the footage is from the seven years prior because it took me seven years to get through my undergraduate degree. Um, and there's a lot of themes in it and the themes have to do with the things that I talk about, managing certain things, different types of dynamics. Um, and it shows why I have become such a proponent of mindfulness tools, mindfulness tools, mindfulness skill sets. Um, so another one of the excerpts that I'm going to be posting has to do with the tattoos on my wrists and the symbols in them. And that will be a good segue for me to get into that a little bit more. But I'm going to voice it over differently because I just don't like the way that it's done in the video. There's a lot of parts of that project that are very self-indulgent because it was for me to basically validate what I had been through. Like I needed to make that project and get it out of my system, but um, it's really hard for me to watch. <laughs> I don't like it for lots and lots of reasons, not to mention there's like people in the, the movie, um, which isn't appropriate obviously to share and stuff. So um, I was thinking about it and like the purpose of reposting certain aspects of it and uh, what I believe is going on today in the world has to do with people, the world that we live in not being very navigable or manageable, um, nobody really being able to handle it and everybody seeking out vices and things that can help us have our needs met. That's why vices arrive in our lives is that we're trying to control something. And I think about one instance in particular, like I had my... Um, it's discussed a little bit in the video, but my issues with certain substances and uh, drugs are one thing, you know, I had prescription medications. There were other prescription medications that I abused that weren't for me. Um, drugs you'll find on any college campus or, you know, city streets and all sorts of things. Um, and that was also kind of why I was involved in so many different toxic relationships through time, but alcohol is different. Um, it's so much more accessible. And so there was periods of my life, especially because of my avid journaling, where I would just end up like in the middle of classes, in the middle of the day, anytime between 10 a.m. and 2 a.m., I might just find myself in some dive bar. I liked the anonymity of hole-in-the-wall, crusty dive bars. Um, and, you know, typically a bunch of middle-aged men or older men. And I always felt, because of the journal, like I had an activity like I was different than them and I wasn't sitting at the bar, you know, having a shot of tequila and a beer at 11 in the morning because I was writing and it was just a break in between classes or something like that, um, which obviously isn't right. That was a challenging time for me. But, you know, looking back on it, just like if I think about what that is, like you want people want to have a space where they're not judged and where they belong somewhere. And I think that's what I found in those spaces is that I wanted to just go and not be judged and have some place where I could walk in and somebody says hi to me and recognizes me and knows what I want and <laughs> serves it to me and doesn't express concern and it's not their business to know and stuff. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I've just been... I've been thinking about about that and why why we need certain coping mechanisms. I mean, a lot what's very interesting is that a lot of therapeutic treatments involve going through people's trauma, childhood trauma, teenage trauma, adult trauma. Um I, I, I and a lot of people out there have experienced that, but I don't think that we talk enough about the trauma that we experience at the hand of the larger systems that are in place. Um, and the other thing I wanted to clarify is that somebody might watch that montage and be like, okay, well, you talk a lot about how medications were damaging to you, but you also admit that you were doing other things that made the interactions 
not what they should have been. And so I want people to know that there were times they could be considered my rock bottom times where I was completely sober. I wasn't drinking alcohol, doing any other kinds of drugs. And I was only on the medication that I was prescribed to be on in order to help and stabilize me. And those were my, some of my darkest times. Um, what did medication and only medication in, in times of sobriety do for me? Um, they made me feel completely flat and I, I lost my ability to do any of the larger scale thinking that I do. I didn't believe I was intelligent. And because of that, I wasn't able to be confident among my peers or share my thoughts. And that's a big part about how I learn and take up space in a learning environment. So if you were wondering if I ever gave that a shot, yes, I did. I did give that a shot. Um, alcohol is one of the biggest ones for so many people just because it's so normalized. Um, Again, like talking about drugs or partnerships, like I, if I ever gravitated or attracted a person who didn't want to be complicit in my negative behaviors, then I would run away from them because I wanted people who would enable me around me. And that's very common. You've got huge networks of people who are all dysfunctional, but they enable each other and they normalize each other's dysfunction. And that was definitely my case. And I think societally, that's our, that's our situation. Um, and I haven't shared this, but at my hypnotherapy session, we did talk about substances and what is useful and what is not. And that differs per person. I think we like to define things and say, this is healthy, this isn't. And the world does that too. And then when things are outlawed or not. And um, I do think it's different on the energy of the person. There was a time that where I went through not being able to consume any form of marijuana or THC product at all. I was, I was way too sensitive. And if I did, my energy would become way too vulnerable so that I was just constantly in a state of anxiety. And that's not how my energy is today. I don't benefit from doing it around other people because I still turn into an energetic sponge that's far more sensitive than I would be. It's something that I like to do when I'm alone. And... guidance that came through for me around the alcohol is that there's no there's no reason for it there's no reason for it um and that was on the 30th of october that i went to her and i didn't have a drink until saturday the whole month of november no drinks and not even thinking about it which is very new for me um i haven't struggled in a problematic way for years but like other things were more acknowledged um like the forefront of my issues they were given more attention my relationship to alcohol wasn't given that much attention i come from a social drinking family where things are just available we have gatherings and stuff um you know seven years ago maybe i wasn't in the weeds with like my rock bottomness but no one was thinking that i was going into the kitchen to chug three drinks just to get to the point that i needed to be at in order to feel like I could be a part of a social setting. Um, so many different ways that people kind of adapt their, their sneakiness that is a result of their addictive behaviors um, to keep it going, to keep it alive. Um, so anyway, I posted it. I chose to post it. And so I'm just clarifying it a little bit. The other excerpts, like I said, are going to be about the tattoos, but then I might also post one about um, artwork and a period of my development where I was going through the process of taking it a little bit more seriously, right? So a lot of people in the world today, they might be like, huh, maybe I have a, maybe I have a, a gift in mediumship. Maybe this strong gut feeling that I've always known that I have that's so evident that even the people around me are like, you have a really good sense of what am I? Maybe it's more than that, right? And you don't know where to go with that. Uh, there's a part of the video that I made from 2019 that is me in that space being like, maybe I'm not just very curious with an active mind. Maybe there's something else going on. So just refining my ability to understand the different energies that are influencing me in my mind on a daily basis. Um, oh. 
Uh, okay, last last thought on this on this topic is that I I'm in a place to kind of look back on certain things now and think about how badly I was trying to stay afloat in one way or another. Stay afloat and and because because medication and therapy when I was, you know, behaving, receiving the care that was the right way for me to be cared for given how I was diagnosed, uh, you know, throughout different times that was not sustainable for me. I had to create my own model that infused it with the energetic tools, taking the dialectical and cognitive behavioral therapy skill sets that I learned in treatment and bridging a gap that I needed to bridge in order for those things to work for me. Because the reason why things were so cyclical and it was so hard to break out of certain addictive patterns that I had was because I would go for a period of time feeling like I was doing, you know, the right thing um, on, on medications, seeking counsel in the, in the ways that I, that I was. And sometimes that was group therapies. If I had been discharged from a program and I was back in school, but a couple nights a week, I would go to a group, all different. Uh, I don't even remember, to be honest with you, it all blurs together. There was a lot of different things that I did, but it's like it never worked, right? I would always, that I would I would start to get antsy or feel like I wasn't okay, and then I would go back to one thing. Um, so I think it's important to realize that in the world, a lot of people without knowing it are looking for that like way out. It's a teal swan, she's a spiritual speaker. She's a channel, I mean, you can tell if you listen to her talk that she's a channel, but um. She said, if we understood that a lot of mental illness is merely means of navigating unsafety, then it would change the way we treat it. And that's very true. Um, again, going back to the quote that I shared the other day in a video around like my healer telling me that I'm like one light shade of madness away from being like Russell Crowe's character in A Beautiful Mind. Um, a lot of people like me, or people who have spiritual gifts, and the system has failed them. Um, I feel like I'm one of the luckiest ones. I feel incredibly lucky. And I think we need to continue to evolve different systems and unite certain things that people consider as being one or the other to create a way for for people to receive help without ha you know without it coming at such a big cost where there are parts of themselves that are not being validated and being shut down that are like trying to come out you know to the surface and uh yeah so I also would like to just state, because I set up, not intentionally, but set up a lot of unrelated different forms of speech around, like one of the shorts I posted, a couple of the examples that I used in videos from last week or the week before. It might lead one to believe that I have a background in stripping or exotic dancing, and I just want to say for the record that I have never done that. Um, not that there would be a problem if I had. I've just been in those environments for a number of reasons, as many people have. You can imagine me being 18 years old, running through the red light district, completely drunk in Bangkok. So we're gonna take um, two cards, from each deck for each position. And then we're gonna go from there. And by each position, I mean current energy, energy to embrace and energy to release. I'm gonna do biggest obstacle. I'm gonna do hidden energy, but only after and only with the Matthew Hughes eliminated whatevers. Ooh. 
What else did I have for... <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> oh, okay. This is a long time, a long time after the fact, but like a while ago, so random, so random too. A while ago, I was talking about uh, star sign placements and whatnot. And I was like, Marilyn Monroe has her Leo and Venus, just like me, as if to say something about myself. I'm wrong. She doesn't. I'm sorry. I just, I'm wrong about that. I don't know where I learned that or why I thought that. But that was not correct information that I provided and I had to admit it. But I'm, I'm a little late on that. That was months ago. And I shared that. Yeah, to be honest, I've been channeling so much that I don't know what to, I, I'm not in a space where I can filter through messages right now to like add in any stuff. There's a lot, but it'll come out in the reading if it needs to. It'll be dispatched proportionately. <laughs> I've been starting to ask my guides to sort things in a better way for me so that I can create. I mean, I'm not bothered by the length of the videos. Um, they're a living record, really. I mean, I've said this before, but it's less about how many people watch them now and it's more about the fact that they are something of a something of a walkthrough, you know? You can, it, it is always my recommendation if you find these videos um, to go s watch them like a series. Like start in Italy and watch them from the summer solstice onwards. Because I start, I launch a lot of like, an analogies for the first time and then carry them forward and stuff and it is kind of a journey but um just asking to continue refining the way that I sort and organize my information okay that is one of them I'm being told there was a card left on the table so Two cards from each deck for each position. That's a lot of energy. Are we sure we want to do We are. We are sure. Okay. So this will be current. Energy to embrace. Energy to release. Current. Energy to embrace. Energy to release. Oh, and if you didn't see my post on it, I will be offering personal readings and sessions over video or phone starting in January. There's three different kinds. Two of them are 30 minutes long. The difference is that one of them is a reading with cards. One of them is not. It's what could be considered more of like a support session. <clears throat> um, and email me if you want to know more information about it. I'm happy to share how they've gone in the past, the sessions that I do with people, and what um, it might look like. Uh, what it might look like to walk away with materials from one of these sessions. So our current energy. Yeah, it's a lot going on. Okay. Two of Wands and Knight of Wands. All right. <laughs> ah! Can you believe it? Of all the times I use these cards, we haven't seen the majority of the Psychic Tarot deck. We haven't seen, I mean, you can tell that I shuffle now, right? <laughs> Yet this card comes out so much. Um, it's the same reason why Judgment and the Wheel of Fortune continues to come out because so much of what is changing in the collective and the world and our individual lives as a result of that is to divine timing. It is not up to us right now. So two, two, and then we have the night. And I always talk about the night as being more of a brash, impulsive action forward. Um, the wands being about that, that, that spiritual energy of the creativity, the momentum, the passion, the movement, be, you know, he's planning, strategizing, looking out on the land. These guys are in the same position, though. This man, there's an aspect of him that lives in this guy who's walking the track, letting the sands of time flow. And what we can see from this visual is that the sands of time, there's roots here. It's represented by a tree. 
that lets us know that it takes a while. It takes a while. This is our current energy. Um, so as far as what takes a while, we've got the heart chakra as well. And then in our animal spirits, we have number nine, brown bear, and number 26, flamingo spirit, embrace the in-between. So brown bear is saying, take some time out. This is current energy. It's a nine. And then embracing the in-between, that adds up to an eight. I mean, the in-between is all about wanting to be somewhere. And I've talked about this before, but it's like this immediate conception of an idea. And then all of these different uncomfortable stages to having an idea and not having experienced the implementation of it or the smooth, you know, parting of the seas that we aspire to when we conceive of a new idea. Like we want for things to move in our favor. And sometimes we move in such ways to try to support things moving in our favor to be able to do what it is that we want to do. But there's an, another way that is more sustainable that has to do with doing not the right things, but the things that you're guided to do at the right time. And the only thing that gets in the way of that is our human ego. Uh, with the heart chakra here, and I always, I mean, I talk about this card in the ways that I mentioned earlier, but it also has to do with passion in like a lustful manner. Um, not being able to wait. And I'm going to leave that open-ended so that people can apply it to their situations in a way that resonates. But this is our current energy, okay? So there is this tension between needing to wait not wanting to and almost not being able to. So how does that, what is the implications of that? This, this pairing, jumping the gun, sabotaging something by going in too soon because it's fueled by carnal desire or ego. What's the energy to embrace? It's so wild, I can't tell you. Like, this is, we just see the same cards again and again. The energy to embrace from the tarot. Eight of Cups. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's Eight of Cups. I was going to say Eight of Wands, but it's not. He just has a wand. And Five of Pentacles, okay? It's interesting. What I'm seeing with the animals coming in to clarify this. Skunk spirit, number 54. Look, we have two nines then within the animal because five and four is nine, brown bear is nine. It says know your worth, okay? What I'm getting with that is that there might be certain situations that we feel left out of, but in a lot of cases, the universe will block you out of something if it's trying to protect you or redirect you. Knowing your worth is about not, you know, hanging around in situations that make you feel like you're not worthwhile. We're often put into those situations so that we can remember that we are worthwhile and keep on keeping on. Now we've got passion ignited, okay? This is the Ace of Wands in this deck. And again, there's this connective heart chakra with the green on this card. And the other one is firm foundation. We've seen it before. I mean, look, we keep having these rep repetitions too, four and four. So there's a lot of bleed through from the current energy into the energy to embrace. I really like the... Um, I really like the expression on this woman's face. And I like how this is something of like, you know, a halo or a membrane or a an energy, but when it crosses her forehead, her skin, her hair, it turns different colors. It's like this little circle has a the ability to create a different quality of energy around the things that it passes through. And this is an artistic depiction, right? So we would assume that you wouldn't be able to see this if she was standing in front of you, but passion ignited. I mean, passion has to do with, with all of the chakras, but um, what I'm trying to say is that if there's a passion that cannot be tempered, right? Or it needs to like 
calm down. This is masculine energy. This is feminine energy. She's like in the same boat and feeling it, but she's allowing it to be what it is without having that kind of desire to press on prematurely for whatever reason. And then with the advice as well, it's like, Passion is one thing, um, but emotions are another thing. Oh, sorry, I'm just checking a text. <clears throat> Passion is one thing, emotions are another thing. Yet they're very interrelated. So the other thing I'm getting is that we've got two birds and the other card in addition to skunk is let spirit be your guide. Let spirit be your guide. So, okay, let's just think about sexual energy and the chakras for a second because we've got kind of two camps in the world. We've got people who, if they're very classically religious, then um, sexual experience is like demonized and stuff. Um, or people who are very in touch with sacred sexuality, but they get detached from the upper chakras and remaining in, um, well, I was talking about the number of the beast really biblically 666 and why that is considered to be the number of the devil, the earthly realm and all of its temptations to be indulged in and engaged in. It's very easy to see that our society is like, what do people even ascend to, right? It's like you, you have a career, potentially start a family. I mean, less and less we're seeing that. Like a lot of men out there are just choosing to stay single. They don't, they don't want to deal with everything that comes, you know, and they have ways to get what it is they do want. Um, women too, a lot, you know, people, whatever. Um, things in the world are changing, but if we think about all of the young, talented individuals trying to get into the entertainment industry at this point in time, which there are millions of them, aspiring to be in acting or, you know, musical production or whatever it is. What is it that we aspire to? Like, I think of this one episode of the show on Amazon Prime, The Boys, I actually recorded a video one time where I watched the entire episode and I paused it and I gave you timestamps the entire first episode, first two actually. And I just gave like my critical commentary on it. But then I was like, this is taking the channel in a totally random direction. Um, so I didn't post it, but I love to do that. Nobody who watches shows with me likes it because you know, I constantly pause, listen to me talk for 45 minutes and then resume. So maybe that's just for me to do. But anyway, there's a scene from this show where it's like, um, I don't know, hero gasm or something. It's like this big orgy for the superheroes. And I think it touches on, you know, there's like reddits and stuff where you've got accounts from bankers who they're young finance bros and they're successful in Manhattan. And then they're like, yeah, I mean, the more successful I got, the more I got these invitations to these eyes wide shut like parties. Um, there's no secret. It's no secret that there are secret societies in the world. There always have been. Um, and it just makes me think of the fact that the, you know, they call earth and the earthly plane as it's been like the devil's playground. A lot of people who are acquiring all this wealth, the wealthiest people in the world, what are they do, doing with it? Uh, well, you know, they're exercising the indulgences of the earthly plane. And so you've got people who are following the religious path that think that anything outside of it is overly indulgent in the physical aspects of sexual experience and it's completely unattached to God. Uh, and then you've got the other side of the coin. And, and I mean, what's really true with it, when you think about it, life is a sexual experience because that's how we create more life and creative energy. Um, and you explore your sexuality through sexual experience. I'm sorry, spirituality through sexual experience. 
what I'm getting at with all of this is that a lot of people tend to have the upper or the lower chakras more fully activated. For me, for a long time, it was my upper chakras and I had no ability or wherewithal to ground that in. And I was also carrying trauma and blocks in my lower chakras that made it hard for me to stay grounded because I was keen on dissociating from my body because I had not healed the things that I was carrying in my body. Can you not, please? No. And you, in order to be deeply spiritual, you, in my opinion, you need to honor the sexual energy. I'm not saying, like, you can be a nut, you can be abstinent. That doesn't mean you don't have sexual energy. It means, and I'm <laughs> thinking of the Sex in the City episode where Samantha wants to seduce your, your yoga instructor, but he is celibate. But he talks about recycling the sexual energy through the toroidal um, flow of the chakras and how that is deeply erotic for him without the expression of that energy. Um, I can relate to that in certain capacities if I am celibate for a period of time, but I'm working on a bunch of artwork. Anyway, um, it is a full and complete system for a reason. And a lot of different camps in the world are used to criticizing how to embody it. Um, and I'm seeing that the cards are allowing us to experience some of these things like trusting in the energy of the third eye and the throat chakra, the crown chakra, new experiences, understanding. Look, 32. It was 32 minutes, 32 on the card. Um, allowing for certain experiences for you to actually be like, maybe if I think about what's happening in my mind differently, it will start to happen differently. And I can change and evolve some of the things that I feel are like trying to open up or come online for me right now. That's that's more of the upper chakra spiritual stuff. Being able to trust and see with the third eye or start to parse out psychic downloads instead of being like, what a, what a brilliant idea. You know, pause and listen and see what else comes in. Um I was working with St. Simon the other night. Well, no, I, I was actually just talking to myself like I do in my kitchen and I had some questions and I heard St. Simon will answer your question. That's what I heard in my clairaudient mind. And then I felt the energy. He comes in over here for me, right around here. And, uh, you know, in the past, at an earlier point in my journey, I probably, my mind would have been too busy to hear that. And then if you don't hear it, I don't wait to receive the message. There are still parts of my today where I'm like, okay, like I'm waiting. <laughs> but then I do get the information and like, I feel like I've given enough space in my own conscious flow. Again, going back to the scissors, like cutting through that and allowing for messages to come through. To know that the answers will come and they'll get stronger and stronger as they have space in your conscious mind to fully put their roots in, you know? I'm also finding, which is very cool, this might be relevant for people out there, that I'm getting better at chasing my open loops of thought. I was on a dog walk the other day and I was thinking about something and what was very weird is that I wasn't even close to this individual. I was crossing the street, walking the dog, looked over, made eye contact with a gentleman and immediately my mind went completely blank, totally blank. It was the weirdest thing. Uh, I had no reaction to this person. It was a quick glance. And then I kept going on my way and I was like, he took all my thoughts. And my guides were like, no, we just, we just shielded you from whatever it was that that was. I don't need to know. We don't need to know in so many circumstances. But I was like, okay. Um, because here's the thing too. We get, if you start to, I've been in a very sacred, pri sacred private space trying to protect my energy and let myself feel good so that when I'm around people, I don't, you know, go into this waffleation and, and stuff, but people can, um, it's not about the way you look. It's about your energy. Uh, 
but people are drawn to it, drawn to it in public. I'll say also the night before, so you have to be, um, I always say, you know, careful in managing who you allow to attach to your energy. Based on things like the excerpt of the video that I shared, um, I have been pushing for a lot uh, throughout my life to hold firm a resilience, a level of resilience that is going to be able to pick itself back up pretty quickly after almost anything. And I also talk about, a lot, I mean, I talk about threats that we can see and feel, but there's a lot of threats <laughs> that I've been made to feel like I'm a, a paranoid person um, and they're real. I, I'm not not gonna go not gonna go too much into that. Um, I just mean in the way of uh, like the energy matrix and things that frequencies and stuff uh, that I used to feel totally crazy for feeling affected by because other people weren't as affected by them and and stuff. So I was at a hockey game the night before the night before Thanksgiving with my dad. And it was a great time. I like going to events like that. You once once in a while, great time. But I felt watched. I felt very watched. I feel watched a lot of the times. I think a lot of people possess this ability where you know when you're being watched and you know where it's coming from. You know what I mean? You can be like, who who is staring at me? I get that a lot. I don't care so so much of the time. Um, but this one was like niggling at me. I could feel it. I could feel it sitting in the stadium, having a great time. My epic goal is to get on the Jumbotron uh, whenever I go to games. So that was my focus. And I asked my guides, I was like, who is it? Do I know this person? Like who is watching me? Cause I could tell. And they said without like any other, cause I was about to, I was irritated. I felt distracted. It was such a strong pull on my energy that I was like, what do you like, what do you want? <laughs> who are you? What do you want? Um, and all, they, all I heard in my mind and what I felt was, you don't even want to know. Don't look around. You don't want to know. And it took about, I don't know, three hours. It was later in the evening. I had left the game. I was at home and I got a text from somebody who I no longer wish to be in touch with at all anymore. And they were like, I saw you tonight. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I knew it, but I'm glad I didn't look around because had I made eye contact with said individual, it wouldn't have added to my experience. I would have been like, oh, great. You are here. You know who you are. You know why I don't want to speak to you anymore. <laughs> so now let's get into the energy to release pile. My point in running through all of that is that there's so many like, uh, well, Where am I? You know, we got the waiting game. Sometimes when you take time out and you're being forced to wait, you come to understand new things about the direction you want to go in that helps you modify it. As the opportune time to move at all approaches, you can make these modifications. Like, like he's sitting, right? He's sitting. Now they're self-pitying but they're also in survival mode. That's a combo where answers arise from. But taking time out, right? It's important, and I talked weeks ago in the car, it was a car video about plateaus, spiritual plateaus, ascension plateaus. Eventually it just turns into a spiral staircase. You're not really having those resting points by the way the hiccups I, I asked about them the other day because I was hiccuping a lot the other the other day um my hiccups are a form of release <laughs> so if I hiccup which I do almost every video I, I tend not to notice because it happens so much and I'm used to it but um whatever I just said before I hiccup is something that my body's energy needed to release something from as a result of saying or processing it's just a fun fact Yeah, so the waiting game, take time out, embrace the in-between, let spirit be your guide. 
all of these things are supporting what it is that I'm talking about, where I feel like the position that we're in, the position that you're in, the position that we find ourselves in f pertaining to a lot of different things. I see this as like career, relationship, personal, like I, I, a lot of stuff. It's a, it's a position that can actually be inverted to be understood as something that is pretty fortuitous because it's giving us this slowed down, I'm seeing the matrix like a bullet, you know, you, you get, you get to slow down the process of something that's quite fast. Like looking back on this time period in a year or however long, I think we're going to see that this time really flew by, kind of flew by. It is flying by, <laughs> but the waiting game, needing to trust in the wheel of fortune and the energies that are unfolding, they're asking us, well, they're giving us the opportunity to become a little bit more attuned to these like little subtle changes. Okay. Yeah, and just to wrap this up, firm foundation. We can talk about the root chakra. We can talk about the color red. We can talk about security, stability, heart chakra, however. It's the middle of the upper three and the lower three. And like I talked about before, it's not one or the other. They all are important for all parts of our foundation. Okay. So here's our energy to release. Very interesting because we have two aces. Okay. Energy to release. Ace of cups, ace of swords. This one for me is often about, you know, communication or, or making moves, whereas the ace of cups is new emotional beginning. We did have the ace of wands here in the embrace position. It's from the other deck. But it's almost like basking in the feelings, again, to like her eyes being closed and her just like vibing with her good feelings, her passionate feelings. That's the energy to embrace. This is the energy to release. Same, same, but different. Because this one has just a touch more action orientedness in it. The other thing is that this brings in like actual sexual desire that is more of the lower chakras. Ace of Cups is more of like a heart chakra energy. So there's something about energy to embrace with like, yes, it's an understanding of a tempered energy, um, almost like being able to understand how to hold and possess amplified sexual energy and channel it in the right way. We live in a society that asks us to exercise it very readily, right? There's so many ways to express sexual energy unhealthily. Okay. All right. So I'm going to read the protection messages from our animal spirits in the release position. It's coyote and beaver. Coyote says trust in divine detours, but this isn't the release position. So I just want clarity and I want to read from the book and then beaver spirit lay a solid foundation. I know pretty much at this point what the protection message for that is. And it's about re-examining parts of the foundation that might be rotted. So if we add more, they're going to crumble anyway. That's been a theme going on for months now where I feel like I don't necessarily need to talk about that as much. So what else came out in um, the release position? Moving on and victory and success. And I feel like what I'm getting off of this pairing is that there is something that we are successfully, successfully, I'm seeing um, a little nighty, little silky nighty that a lady would wear. If she drops even, you know, one of the straps, the whole thing's just going to slip off very easily because it's a lightweight garment. I'm sort of feeling like there's this like chainmail lead garment that we were wearing, but the last bit of shedding that, it, it slips off like a silken nighty. Uh, and that's why there's victory and success here. There's something that's very, um, look at uh, more doubles, six and six. I've had, I mean, look, they're everywhere. That also speaks to pairs, right? Partnership energy doubles. I mean, I said I was going to take two from each deck, but I did not know that I'd have two aces. Well, three aces, two sixes, two fours, lots of two twos, lots of pairs. Because Why? The energy is very balanced right now. The energy is very balanced. There's something that we've been moving away from for a long time. Moving on. He came out a few weeks ago, but there was this melancholic thing about it where it was like having to move on. This is something that we elect to do because we see that it sets us free. And there's a lot 
a lot of weight and density that falls away when that last little like strap that like releases the whole thing it's like whoo, whoo, it allows you to whoo, come right back up to some type of inaccessibly higher state of being maybe that's a higher perspective Sometimes we get into situations with people, and if we were on our own and we were objectively looking at that situation from the outside, we'd be like, no, stupid, I would never entertain that, blah, blah. But when you're in it, there's very real human dynamics. And like for me, for example, I get in, enmeshed, or I, I did in the past with certain things where I'm like, I know why you're doing this. I feel, <laughs> want, you know, just justifying things that aren't acceptable or explaining things away, all the little ego dramas of the mind. Things that you can't see when you're a part of it. We're at a place where there are things that are slipping away and we're very easily assuming this higher vantage point that wasn't available to us because we you can't be at that higher vantage point when you have the chain mail nighty on. It's got to come off in order for you to reach that point. So that's a good thing. Let me read the protection spirit around trust and divine detours. Sometimes a goal is so enticing and alluring that you lose your footing in the pursuit. You begin to fixate on capturing this prize, whether it be an opportunity you have always wanted, a relationship with an elusive someone, or the promise of that big break. Coyote spirit warns you that this trickster energy seducing you now will yield nothing but disappointment an unnecessary heartache if you let yourself be fooled. Great Spirit wants the best for you, so when your plans go topsy-turvy, know that Coyote Spirit is present to protect and bless you. Listen to her gentle warning not to take the world too seriously or become too attached in the form of timing of your desire. Something better is beckoning. If you learn your lessons and light in your heart, it will not be long before you see that crooked though the path may have been, you were on the right one all along. Yeah, I mean, I think that has to do with moving through some of the lessons that we're moving on right now. And then like it says, by being like seduced or enticed, there's a learned thing within uh, development, how to develop and evolve ideas, possibly. There is this gung-ho, untethered, unfettered thing. And so I think that this is the pitfalls of being seduced by success or like get rich quick schemes or, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Potentially trying to be with somebody without any emotional, like if it's only a sexual desire and it's not built on any kind of firm foundation that is, you know, aligned for both parties. There's also something that's very, unhealed masculine energy about allowing for passion to be ignited and not acting on it. Yeah, it's talking about fixating on capturing a prize. <sighs> Instead of acknowledging that that's the exact form of attachment that's going to create, like, basically, basically, and what I'm seeing is like, um, it's a worm, so it's blind. It's us, okay? We're a blind worm. We're, we're going. And if we, if we get a destination in mind or an idea, the destination very, very well may be the same, but the route to get there, the universe is trying to pull us in the path of least resistance. And when we get too attached to different aspects of it, we like hole ourselves into this, like there's a, a shale wall in the earth. We, we can't burrow that way because there's an obstacle. Um, and so we have to go back around into the main vein that we were supposed to be in all along supposed to be being a very loaded thing because again you're not you're never not on the right maybe we had to go over there because there was a lesson that helped us avoid it in the future everything kind of has its way of remaining in balance regardless of what we choose with our free will but it's all about what you want to manifest <laughs> um 
Of course, nobody would be like, well, I'm going to manifest a couple extra hard to learn lessons. No, but that is oftentimes what we are doing if we're not aware enough of our own self-sabotaging tendencies. And self-sabotaging tendencies doesn't, don't have to be the, the big, grand, fuck it all up. They could just be as self-limiting as... I don't know. I don't know. Thinking that something's going to get away from you if you don't act impulsively and hastily. That might not be the case. All right. Okay. I'm going to get a clarifier for the energy to embrace and the energy to release. One after the other. One card for each. Clarifier for energy to embrace. Is that two? No, it's just one. Yeah, okay, it's the Six of Pentacles. Thinking outside of ourselves again in order to reignite our energy of... Okay, I'm also hearing a message about... There is something about our um, emotions, our desires right now that are focused. It could be on a person or a relationship, but it could be on a project or an idea too. It could be on something. There's an advice within this to take it off, uh, like eye on the prize, right? Talking about being too wrapped up in that. Take this energy, that passion ignited visual, and let that spill out into everything that you do because you're fired up about something. You can... Allow for energy that motivates you to be just that. It's not invalid if what you're motivated, why you possess that energy, isn't attained yet. Huh. And I've got five of wands on the bottom of the deck that I just happened to see. What's clarifying the energy to release? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I feel like I'm in kind of a funny space today but I was called to do a reading so clarifying the energy to release we have the um knight of cups and the five of swords and what I'm getting what I'm getting what I'm getting with this is that there's there's a whole lot of well come on look look we've got knight and guy thinking knight and guy thinking there's too much, there's analysis paralysis here. Why? Because we're playing the waiting game. But you're not going to be helping yourself if you just add more. Five of cups on the bottom is making more sense now, right? Adding more cooks to the kitchen, even within the realm of your own mind. What? What? Mr. Bobo's just staring at me. But I guess he always is. Um... Cut the deck to get the biggest obstacle, and then the bottom of the deck is the hidden energy. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, I said it. Bottom of the deck, hidden energy is the five of wands. Biggest obstacle is, clarify this, what's under it? Okay. That's what I thought. <laughs> biggest obstacle, I was going to say, so, so. If that means that we're being asked to take time out, tend to ourselves, protect our energy, allow for things to keep moving without the attachment to the end goal as we have it in our heads, the obstacle is then persisting with uh, uh, you know, our silly little daily tasks that get us closer somehow to something that we're trying to do to keep doing that and feel like it's worthwhile. And skunk spirits coming back up to be like, no, you're worth again. What are these things that you do day in, day out? Maybe we can extend this beyond, you know, people, we need to earn livelihoods and pay the bills and stuff. But there are daily tasks that don't have to do with that every day. You've got your hierarchy of needs. You have to have some water each day, some food. Um, if you can get sunlight, then that's good. Especially right now, by the way, if you can go outside and just expose your skin and yourself to sunlight, the quality of the sunlight is uh, evolving. 
like for the last year or so, the sun's just becoming white. It's not yellow anymore. <laughs> um, anyway, though, like things every day, the daily habits, the daily habits, and they could be like emotional too, like intentionally listing five things that you feel really blessed about. Um, knowing the Queen of Pentacles was behind the Seven of Pentacles, knowing that there's something to that and that it's still paying off. Clarify that. Yeah, it's it's it, just just managing any type any type of restless energy where we want to do things at a pace other than what's available to us. Knowing that when you take it day by day, moment by moment, you can still be successful going at the pace that's available to you. Successful in the way that you want and in the way that makes sense for what it is that you're trying to do. Even if it's not on the, the timetable that it that it would be that you're kind of that you thought or that you want. Clarify the five of wands as the biggest obstacle. This is such a big transformation that it's, it's hard to, it's hard to do it in a vacuum. We're not doing it in a vacuum. There are people that their existences have neighboring zip codes to our existences what you do affects other people what's underneath it the well what's underneath that king of wands what's underneath that the queen of wands <laughs> ah. hmm. mm. yeah okay I mean, I'm getting a, 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 a few different interpretations of this, and I would like to end the recording. So I'm not going to go into all of them. But huge transformational stuff. I believe that a lot of people at this point are coming to realize that maybe their maybe their spouse, maybe their partner, maybe their bestest of friends, maybe just the random people that they're not even that tight with. But like I talked about before in the beginning, the way beginning of the video, talking about the fact that a lot of people just fall together socially or otherwise because they, it, they, they enable each other to get away with the things that they are using to avoid certain things, you know. So there's a depth within this transformation that's deeper than the level of superficiality that we might have entertained with a lot of different connections, but people might not like this, like the person that you're trying to move away from or the people or the ways of being, even if they don't involve other people, there still might be like weird aspects of tension. This this rarely happens, by the way, you saw me shuffle. Rarely happens when we get to, to uh, you know, a night, uh, no, not a night, that was a slip, but it's because we have two of them out already. It's a king and queen. And they're a pair. They go together. They're of the same suit. And it's wands. And we've already ha had a lot of wands in here. And that, like the, the passionate aspect of it, I think that for a very long time, the message within all of my readings have been about emotional fulfillment and stability. We've had a lot of, we've had a lot of cups coming out for the whole summer. You know, two of cups, ten of cups. They come out a lot. Um, and I think this kind of... Energy reading amidst all of that is also talking about the fact that um, whatever it is that you're trying to welcome in is just going to be like deeply satisfying on that like shame-free sexual level too. Shame-free sexuality that is not <laughs> demonized or improperly possessed. Um... I'm being told that this is this is going to unfold for the next few weeks, so I'll be talking about it more. So stay tuned. We'll see. I don't even know yet, you know. But um, I want a clarifier. I'd like a clarifier for that. Where'd my deck go? Oh, here it is. <laughs> like, where are, all the, where are all the cards? Clarify that. The king and queen of wands having a balanced pair. The well after death. Huh. 
reunion and celebration, coming together, coming together in a social setting with friends. But also that can speak to outside influences affecting connections. Um, so removing the stuff that is infiltrating on one's ability to have that balanced pairing. And again, it doesn't have to be you and another. It could be two aspects of yourself achieving balance. like five cards. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh. This is a lot. This is a lot. Okay, going into my cozy place to read this. Okay, so just to finish the spread, really, because I'm not going to go on for too long, too long with it. Asking me to take the top. Yeah. Page of Pentacles is here. There, there is this contemplation of this new beginning that, that feels kind of insufferable because of the waiting game. I know Wheel of Fortune isn't here, but it's, there's, there is this, uh, faded motion of divine timing playing out in the energy right now. And there's all this other stuff. I see all of the animal spirit oracles that we pulled during this reading. They're like the little cherubs that are chiming in like, know your worth. Rejection is protection. Trust in divine timing. Let spirit be your guide. And we're like, okay, 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 okay. Uh, this, by the end of December is what I just heard. By the end of December, you will have a new beginning that will be the result of the conclusion of what I have here on the table. What is that? Persevering through overcoming the things that have held us back, the deeply tempting things, all the stuff I've been talking about for months with like the things that we engage in when we know better, but they function for us. So you can't engage, you can't, you can't engage without something until you realize what it does for you and how you can mitigate slash modify your need for it in a different, more healthy, healed coping mechanism. So many different things. It's also an obsessive energy. It's an obsessive energy. How can we be passionate without being obsessive? But more so, what I think is like all the stuff that we've engaged in that's been holding us back. The more advanced you get, the sneakier the devil energy. There's always going to be something to tempt you. There really always will be. It never stops. It just gets more and more insidious. Uh, for example, I think if you have somebody like, say, say I started doing spiritual teachings and I went out on the path and I started a business and then I became like super obsessed with the profit of it all. And I started like, like imagine I hire someone and I disappear and I'm not the creative voice of the company anymore and I only care about the profit. It's like, you're always fight, res resisting, caving to losing your humanity and spiritual truth to something of the earthly plane that strives to contort that into something that it's not. So I think we've persevered and had to fight through a lot of, uh, this guy's alone, right? A lot of very personal things that are incessant. Seven of Wands energy is the card that came out when I was in Paris and I was trapped on a plane that never took off for six hours and was given a bottle of water and a biscuit. <laughs> and I felt really depleted and I was like, there's nobody else to do this. I wish I could just tap some clone and be like, can you take over? I need a nap. Um, I had to just keep going and going and going. And that's how it's been in some regards for us this summer. Why? Why? Again, I already talked about 54 and the nine double nines. Here it is again, because we want to be stable. And this does a great job of exemplifying what I was saying before with like, it's been about emotional stability. But it's reminding us that that too is going to be what I talked about with the healthy expression of 
creative energy and sexual energy. Honestly, it's, it's, at, it's by the end of the year, I think the people that I speak to on this channel will have successfully done a lot of the polarity balancing that I've been talking about for months where there's these ways that our own inner masculine energy can over function or under function and our inner feminine energy can over function and under function. And that's why we see, I mean, to be speaking, if you're, if you are, I mean, from a heteronormative lens, a, a male or a woman, you would typically have one in a more dominant capacity. But what we see, and I've talked about this too, with a lot of women, in the past 50 years, it's like, well, women can do it too and in careers and that all of that is super great. But then they overexert their masculine side. Like, for example, okay, if you remember a couple weeks ago, I was talking about a, some glass that broke and a former partner had broken that glass. And I was telling this story and I was like, I don't know how to dispose of it, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm sure a person or two out there was like, why didn't he take care of it? Great question. <laughs> great question uh he told me he would and because I don't like to over function you know I'm not your mommy a lot of men just want to be mothered they don't know that but they do they make it very apparent once you get involved with them because of the collective woundings that we have but a, a lot of women will resent men for, it's just so complicated but anyway because I'm actively trying to be an equal partner in the relationships that I choose to entertain I said okay I trust you you're gonna take care of it sounds great I feel taken care of when you say you'll take care of it. Not to mention it's your fault. <laughs> you broke my shit. Clean it up. Um, sorry. Uh, that didn't happen though, right? So then I'm like, gentle reminder, you said you would take care of it. Can you please do that? Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. Uh, well, it never happened, so now it's up to me. But I will just tell you that I, I intentionally try to not be the type of woman, because so many women are guilty of this, of being like, well, you said you were going to do it, but you didn't, so I did it. And then the guy's like, well, then there's, no, there's nothing for me to do if you go forth and do it. Well, in her defense, you probably didn't do it right away, which, let's be honest, can we just, do, like, you know, wait for commercial break? Anyway, I'm getting off base here, but... Um, what I'm getting is that a lot of the pur the purging out, I think a lot of the habits, it could be, you know, vice-like in our own, our own practices, our own toxic patterns of actual um, procrastination, you know, or avoiding certain things. I think about how, like, it's insane. I, I don't watch anything anymore. I just stream things when I'm doing research <laughs> or like trying to provide commentary on things. It's not an activity. I used to watch so much TV just to be a creature of comfort. Maybe I was sketching or doodling or journaling or something simultaneously, but like that adds nothing to my life anymore. I don't do it anymore. Um, other types of like thought patterns that I've consciously become aware of this year in 2023. And I'm like, hmm, I do that a lot. It's not assisting me in any way. I think the majority of these devil energies that we've been pushing to not only notice within ourselves, but then combat and detangle and unwrite, pull the thread at the foundation of the twisty so that it ceases to feed programming. In other words, pull out some of the blocks that make us the reactive people that we are in the specific ways that we are reactive so that we are not like that anymore. So that when we respond to people or interact with them, those efforts are not a byproduct of things that we are projecting that we haven't healed within ourselves. Emotional fulfillment and stability. I think the capper, I think what's coming in is the managing and the synthesis of this like passionate sexual energy that is not um, expressed in shadow. That's what's coming in because we already know about this. Here, I didn't even share this. The other one is emotional fulfillment, pre-empress energy of abundance, gratitude for a kingdom. Four, four wands. This card also represents 1111, which is counterpart balanced energy. Going along with all of the numerical pairs that we've seen here. So the bottom of the deck, leap of faith, 
beautiful new beautiful new path new experiences i do feel very connected to all of the waiting cards though simply because um well you know we didn't really see major arcanas in this spread except for just now with the fool all of the cards that i pulled is this true am i right yeah we had wands we had pentacles swords cups yeah not, not not that this is necessarily like, oh, well, I mean, we did have the devil, so that's the capstone and the well. Okay, okay, so I'm not completely accurate in saying that, but those didn't come out till later when I was talking about this new beginning that's like, finally, there's been a lot of little new beginnings that are sub new beginnings. They've been nested in a bigger new beginning, and I do think we had new beginnings, you know, but they're not new anymore. We're, we're on new paths. We've changed. This new beginning is the one that's going to take us through the first quarter of the year. If that's not what you're thinking about now, it might behoove you in this energy to start thinking about that and really believe that things can change a lot more than you might have thought. Suspending disbelief. not to let in certain fears or things that might feel anxiety inducing, but to be able to bolster yourself up into a place of believing that you can accomplish more and that more is possible for you. All right. <laughs> it's just checking to see if there's anything else. I'm not completely satisfied. So let's see what's on the bottom of the psychic tarot to leave off on. That's our third nine that's going to go with this, the pentacles. We already have the nine of cups. It's just reiterating that emotional fulfillment. Okay, beautiful. Why? Destiny. All of this lovely green heart chakra energy too. Something very nice. Something that I feel like is happening in the collective of masculine energy. Like understanding sexual energy, creative energy, emotional energy, the fusion of all these things, the fusion of all these things as they feel within our bodies, and then the fusion of how they become manifested in health and in balance in our lives. So whew, it's really beautiful. That's good. All right. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, take care of yourselves, drink lots of water. And as always, please email me if you have any questions or if I can help clear something up. Okay, bye-bye. And... <laughs> Quick lasting thought. Venus moved into Scorpio and Neptune, which has been retrograde, has stationed direct, okay? So Neptune being in its home sign of Pisces, it likes to be there because it's a dreamy planet. So there's this, um, I see it as a film slipping in. It's nice. It's sea foam. It's this color. It's not quite sea foam. It's a little more aqua. It doesn't matter. You see it however you want to see it. That's how I see it. I see it as this sea foam aqua mist, like slipping in. It's this Neptunian um, Pisces energy that might make us feel almost lackadaisical, almost lackadaisically unhinged from reality through this dreamy lens, especially with the influence of venus and scorpio because we just exited all this scorpio business you know scorpio season was very transformational in fact the energy that has since october october was one of the biggest transformational months of the year um collectively and so therefore for a lot of people personally um Right. And so we're in the peak in the in the height of Sagittarius season, which is why I believe, I mean, there's a lot of this this fiery energy that's coming up to be acknowledged. And it's interesting, I see it as this juxtaposition with that dreamy energy. Um, with the Knight of Wands too. That lends itself to a lot of like fantasy and daydreaminess. Uh, if I could give any card to that. Three of Swords.
Ten of Pentacles. Hmm. Yeah, okay, I'm getting another message about what I talked about with the nighty slipping off. Like there's this density to this object that's now going to come loose pretty quickly to be let go. It opens up a little bit more space for us to do some kind of reflection. Neptune in Pisces with Venus in Scorpio is creating this kind of thing. Just be very wary of getting caught into any type of thing where you're projecting any kind of fear onto your future stability. There's so much, like I mentioned earlier, potential to get stuck into some kind of analysis paralysis. Do not do that. Do not do that. Whenever you think that you're getting into a state where you might be using your mind just for the sake of it because you don't know what else to do and there's nothing to do, just take some deep breaths and imagine the little golden scissors coming in and just snipping through the thoughts. Let them fall away like ribbons and then sit in what's left over without engaging an unhealthy coping mechanism. <laughs> Pretty hard to do. A lot of us don't like to sit in the present. I always talk about this when I talk about like gossip and low vibrational stuff. It's like a rubber band. Like people want to snap back into something, but you often don't get a bunch of people sitting around talking really positively. You get a bunch of people sitting around offloading their complaints with each other. Um, and there's a reason for that. So when we're alone, we tend to take on the same energy independently within ourselves, where we're not just like, I love how good I am at this. <laughs> we're not just sitting around thinking like that. We're thinking, I should have whatever it is. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be so gentle with myself. But if I make even one mistake, then I'm going to be incredibly hard on myself. <laughs> no. All right. I think that's enough. Um, I'm going to ring the chime. Then I'm going to say a little prayer. Okay. That wasn't good. Okay. Archangels, ancestors, saints, guides, star family. Please come in and assist me in the collective prayer. Archangel Sandalphon, thank you for transmitting the words. Straight to the ears of God to be facilitated for miraculous change in the lives of the people who hear this. Archangel Michael, please help for everybody who might hear this to release the toxic attachments that are keeping them from embodying their true potential. Archangel Zedkiel, Saint Germain and workers of the ultraviolet flame, please make yourselves available for those who are interested in using your violet flame to burn off any negative energy in their lives. Archangel Gabriel, thank you for sounding your trumpet of victory in the future timelines of the people who might benefit from this energy, marking a period of success after difficulty. Archangel Ariel, Archangel Raphael, 
Thank you for transmitting healing frequencies throughout the physical vessels of the individuals who might hear this message in order to stabilize the energies of the body and promote cellular healing at a quantum level. Thank you for opening the chakras in a healthy way that supports open crown, open root, and enhanced abundance and energy flow. Thank you for helping myself and anybody who watches my videos to be spiritually protected and discerning in any of the energies that are deceptive. or parasitic against the individuals who are expanding in frequency, please assist them in establishing energetic boundaries. Archangel Jeremiel, please assist any of the people who listen to this message in releasing Challenges, worries, anxieties, and fears at this time, anybody who's listening to this recording can imagine a purple magenta light coming in around them, over them, near them. This is the energy of Archangel Jeremiel, and he will assist in transmuting any of the energy that is bogging you down out into the light so that you do not need to deal with it anymore. Thank you for helping in that process. So you can think of certain things that you want to release right now. Thank you for restoring peace in the hearts of the collective so that people may understand their connection to the unconditional love of source energy. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. All right.